Welcome to the Be Empowered Podcast with your host, Graham Hopkins. My goal is to help you regain your power by bridging the gap between who you think you are right now and who you really are. In simple language, that is like making your childhood dreams come true. This is for those who want to make an impact in their lives but don't know how to get there. Be insured. When you know and feel connected to your spiritual mind, you master your world. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Be Empowered Show. I'm your host, Graham Hopkins. The Be Empowered Show is a conversation on what it's like to feel, feel empowered. Today I have a very special guest. Her name is Miyuki Miura from Japan. Welcome, Miyuki. Thank you, Graham. I am so honored to be here with you today, and I am really looking forward to have this conversation with you today. Thank you. So, I've asked Miyuki to come on to this show today because she is an amazing, amazing photographer. And not only an amazing photographer, she also puts a lot of thought into um, the natural shots that she takes and she adds um, quotations to them that are so so meaningful and I just want to chat to Miyuki today about how she arrived at doing this and how she has become empowered through uh, feeling connected with nature so, Miyuki, where did this journey begin for you? When did you first know that this is what you desired to do? Actually, it's very, very recently. It's about one and a half year or almost two years ago. Just I discovered. <laughs> okay, so was it a childhood dream or it just happened later in life? It just happened recently, but when I look back, I knew I was connected to nature, and uh, I was born in the very, very countryside in Japan, and um, almost in the mountain, so I had uh, lots of experiences with nature, and I really love everything about nature. So. Can, you, can you paint a picture of what it was like when you were growing up? Like this scene in the mountains. Can you just um, unravel that a little bit as to how you were brought up? Yes. Um, so where I, my parents live, lives or, yeah, still they are living there. And uh, I can see just mountains and rice fields and basil fields. <laughs> That's the only thing I can see, except for several houses around there but it's so i don't know how, how can i describe it? it's so beautiful air and in the night at night you can see millions of stars and milky ways and during the day i used to go hike on the mountain and in the woods and there are so many different plants and insects and actually I didn't like insects <laughs> until up until recently. Recently I feel so so attracted to them because they're amazing when you focus on them and when you look at them closely, they are amazing creatures. So I love them too. Um, yeah. so, so so I know that you concentrate a lot on clarity in your quotes. So obviously this is something that stemmed from your childhood because it sounds like a, a fairly idealistic uh, setting that you were brought up in. And the mountains were clear and it obviously set the scene for you to explore that more later in life. Yes, I guess so. I didn't notice and I didn't know, <laughs> but yes. I think 
Okay, so I want to share with the viewers, if this is not too glary, this is one of Miyuki's uh, pictures on, uh, I think I found this one on Facebook. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I think, how do I get back to that? I've got to go done. And this mm -hmm. is the whole, a whole series. Now, this is just a small bit of what Miyuki does. Um, we could pick another one randomly. And it says impossibility exists only until you find the way to make it possible. <laughs> Miyuki, tell me, where, where, do you, where do you take these shots? So that, um, we need to explain that you live in England now, which we'll talk about later. Yes. But are you taking these shots in England or whereabouts? Yes, yes in England. Because the, the quality is amazing. And once again, the clarity of all your shots is just exceptional. Thank you. <laughs> I know uh, my wife, Susanna, she loves photography too. And uh, she often enjoys watching your pictures. Oh, thank you. So I know a little bit about your past in that um, Miyuki gained her commercial pilot's license in Australia, of all places. So, in some ways, maybe we're neighbours there for a while, Miyuki. Yes. <laughs> what, what, what year was that, and what ever got you into flying, <laughs> and why? Why did you want to fly? Um, so, in... 20s, late 20s, I spent my life in Germany. I, I lived in Germany for five years. And then I, came, I went back to Japan and I started to work for a um, patent office as a translator. And uh, one day I was commuting to the company. I really remember it was a really hot summer day. I was walking on the street and uh, the light in front of me turned to red. So I was walking slowly toward that. And then suddenly I thought, oh, I want to fly. <laughs> and then suddenly I could see that I was flying by myself in Cessna or something like that already. And I had the most amazing time in my life. At that moment, I was so happy. I couldn't stop being happy. Well, I don't know, for one month, two months. <laughs> I was just so happy to know what I wanted to do. Because I, all my life, I, I was looking for something that I really wanted to do. And so uh, that started uh, my journey to get part of that. And then I started to um, look for a uh, school. And at first, I thought in the United States it would be the best place. And, but I had a friend who married with Australian. And they invited me once to their house. And there was another Australian person who learned how to fly in Australia. And he told me the school about his flight school. So I checked it up and uh, I thought it's ideal. So I went to Australia to get and it was not really easy journey. <laughs> Maybe for you it was easy, but for me, no. It was a really hard, hard time for me because one of the reasons was I never thought I could trust my senses. Mm. You know, when I'm, I was doing the uh, flight training, I couldn't, uh, or I had to trust my senses more than anything, right? Mm. But you learn, you have to look forward, not the gate or any instrument, but you have to trust your sense and you have to feel how high you are and how fast you are going down and everything. But I just couldn't get it. And another reason was, it's funny, but I, I'm too small 
to sit on the seat. So I always carried two uh, cushions, big cushions, but still I was too small compared to my instructor. So what he instructed me, I mean, um, two, you know, two fingers on top of the dashboard, you have to aim to um, level with the horizon or something like that. But my view and his view is different. So it was so difficult for me. And uh, so, you know, before I went, I went solo. It took so long, <laughs> but I did it. And I, I managed to finish everything. Most people, most people probably don't realize that when you're landing an aeroplane, it's all about feel. Everything. Yeah. Yes. They, we, we call it uh, um, feeling by the seat of the pants because you can actually uh, feel it, the feel the energy of the aircraft in your bum. Mm-hmm. So that's where that saying comes from. Yes. It's very true, yeah? Yes. Yes. So that's, I, that's, that's an amazing achievement. So um, did you get your commercial pilot's license? Yes, I did. And uh, I thought about being uh, becoming a pilot, but um, for me the age was not the issue because when I got pilot lesson, I was already thirty six years old. So I think in <laughs> in your industry, maybe I was too old becoming a pilot. Pilot, but I I didn't concern about that. But for me. Um, during the flight, flight training, I noticed I just wanted to be in the, in the air. It's yeah. totally different thing to be in the air and to fly an airplane. So, 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 so nothing is a waste? Yes. So, so what, what is it? What's the, the main thing that you learnt from flying that you now use in your Photography. Mm-hmm. One thing is imagination. Wow. Because I really believe that I got to the end. I mean, I passed the commercial airplane pilot license because of my imagination. I trained it, um, in my imagination so hard. <laughs> I visualize how I'm flying and how I I get past the test and that kind of stuff and it really helped me. That's amazing. So tell us a little bit more about that. What type of things did you imagine in order to make it become your reality? Mm-hmm. So when I started flight training, I didn't think about that at all. But um, I think after two months or three months, I just tag um, before I go. I went solo, you know. I just flew around and around the circuit, you know, so many times. But I just couldn't get it. And then I thought, well. I'm imagining that I cannot do it anymore. <laughs> you know, whenever I try, I fail. That's my uh, in my mind all the time. So I thought, okay, now how about I imagine I can do it and I go solo. I'm flying by myself. Like when I imagine that for the first time, you know, when I found my dream <laughs> to fly. So I started there and I just um, sit in a quiet place or I, I walked along the river where um, there was a river where I was living. So I walked and I imagined how I'm grateful that I passed the test or how I am enjoying the flight or being in the, in the air by myself, you know, and I could see what I can see mm. if I fly. And I was just enjoying the feeling 
how I'm going to feel. <laughs> what 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 is it? What is it about the feeling in flying that makes it so um, satisfying? Mm. The best feeling I ha- I had was just about takeoff. You know, or well, after takeoff, it's so freeing, mm. and I can become one with the air or one with the sky, which I love. And from the bath, you see everything. <laughs> Maybe, maybe that was another lesson that you learned because you you are obviously one with nature when you take these shots because honestly they are phenomenal. Thank you. There's a, there's a real connection there between you and nature. Yeah, you would agree with that. Yes, I do. So <clears throat> a little secret I want to share with you, Miyuki, is I've learnt. Um, a number of energy exercises and also use a little bit of EFT and I actually uh, before descent I actually prepare myself for the landing doing exactly what you're talking about so I'm actually visualizing the end result before we we get there because when you're landing in an aeroplane you you actually have to feel what is going on with the wind, the turbulence, and all these things are being thrown at you um, at the last minute. Like, quite often we land behind a Airbus 380 and it gen- generates a lot of uh, turbulence behind it. So it's not uncommon to, to strike this right at the last minute. And your reaction has to be spot on. And so I find that if I if I focus in my mind the end result, it doesn't matter what comes at me, the answer's there because it's already programmed into my subconscious mind. Mm-hmm. It's an amazing thing. Yes. But it works. Yes, it works. <laughs> so tell me how these two things, imagination and uh, how that's translated over into what you're doing now. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the feeling of freedom so there's the two things there's imagination and the feeling of freedom so obviously that has become a part of your subconscious mind and it's just working its way itself out now in a natural way mm-hmm. first when I'm in nature or in the field I feel totally free and when I'm taking pictures of dinners, I'm not there. I mean, I don't feel any time or space. It's very difficult to describe, but I just feel I'm the dinner, or I'm the sun, or I'm the light, or I'm the, I don't know. I just um absorbed I feel absorbed by nature or beauty of nature. So you're you're absorbed in the nature and then that enables you to capture um, nature from a totally natural viewpoint, yeah? I guess so, yeah. <laughs> so how would you describe that? How do you think it works that enables you to capture such meaningful photographs? I feel like I'm called to take the particular details. Whenever I look around, one particular detail is calling me. I don't know, I feel like that. So I just go there and I just shoot. I, I don't think about anything else. I actually um, self-taught everything. <laughs> so I haven't learned anything about photography. And uh, so I should, I think, but <laughs> so, <laughs> up to now, yeah. So, so you're totally self-trained? Yes. No courses? 
No, not yet. <laughs> I'm not going to say yes. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> just, you know, just I go with the feeling for, forever. I want to go or I feel I'm cold. And everything else happens naturally. So how do you connect these quotes that you use to your photographs? Sometimes when I'm taking the picture at the moment, I feel something. Or after I look at the picture, what I took, I connect with that somehow. I don't know how, but the quote comes to me. I don't think about quotes or anything. But when I'm looking at the pictures, the quote comes to me, <laughs> or some message comes to me. Do, do you have a favorite for your quotes that you use? Well, I used Neville quotes for 100 days. It was a series on my Facebook page called 100 Days to Your Dreams. So I used Neville quotes, but usually now I'm uh, just putting my quotes or whatever I get. Mm. Can you can you explain who Neville is? Because a lot of people wouldn't have heard of Neville. Uh, uh, actually, I don't know <laughs> exactly, but he he was I think he lived in nineteenth um, yeah. and twenty centuries. Yeah, it, it's about a hundred years yes. old. Yeah. He was a famous writer, yeah? Yeah. So you've taken his quotes and, and applied it to the photographs? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in that case, I pick the quote and then I look for my um, pictures and some picture will resonate with that quote. Excellent. Or the, yeah, vice versa. So. <laughs> so Miyuki, on your journey to experiencing oneness with mm -hmm. nature, have, have, have you been experiencing any type of oneness within yourself? Have you noticed a correlation going on? Actually, not so obviously. But when I look back, I knew or I remember one particular experience by Nance four years old. <laughs> so four years old. I I was going to kindergarten in one morning and then we get together, I mean I think seven child and children went together by walk to the um, kindergarten. It took us maybe thirty minutes by walk or something like that because we have to climb mountain. <laughs> Not really steep or anything, but we have to go through the mountain path. And uh, when we came to a very narrow mountain path, one boy said, "You can't go." And uh, he just, you know, uh, everybody else went, and I had to leave. I have to uh, stay there because he said, "No, you can't come." And then, so everybody went. So I could go, I could follow them if I wanted to, but I just stayed there and I found a very, very small stream of water between two rice fields and I just sat by that stream and I found a small, small, uh, tiny crab and I was playing with water and I was watching crab and when I look back at that image, I can feel that I was embraced by the nature around there, and I was one with that, because I was feeling nothing else. I mean, I was not sad, I was not angry, I was not angry, but just enjoying that moment with the nature. Mm. So I think that the, yeah, one experience is that. Past. And what about uh, things like acceptance? How has that played out in your life? Acceptance is a big word. <laughs> and a really, really important key for my life too. 
you know, <laughs> when I look back, there are, of course, lots of events, challenging events or very sad events and so-called negative events in my life too. But when I look back, I know they had to be there and they all were there to lead or guide me to up to this point of my life. And when I got that, I accepted. You accepted which, sorry? Everything what happened to my life. Okay. So you're saying that acceptance is important to um, being present in the moment now. Is that what you're saying? Yes. The acceptance of your past is important mm -hmm. to connect with now. Yes, and the acceptance, accept now, I mean, how I am and how I'm living and everything. Yeah, it's... Okay, yes. so let's go back to your uh, time in Melbourne when you were learning to fly. Mm -hmm. Perseverance is obviously a big part of your makeup. So yes. you would agree with that? Yes. So you've learned perseverance by learning to fly and making that accomplishment. How have you now translated that into what you're doing now, Miyuki? I can't say there is a direct relationship. I mean, what I'm doing now is so natural and I don't need any pastels or anything, you know? I'm just enjoying it and I'm so happy. So, not directly there is a relationship, but in a way, yes. I mean... It almost sounds as if passion has taken over perseverance. Yes, yeah, that's a great way to... <laughs> so, it, it's yeah. like... Even though you wanted to experience the, the freedom of flight, it wasn't, it wasn't really your passion. So you moved on and you found what your passion is in life. And yeah. now everything's starting to flow towards you effortlessly. Yes. Yeah? Yes, you described perfectly. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so another issue I want to touch on is how you used imagination to better your life. So you went from a single young lady to finding your, the love of your life, yeah? Yes. How did that happen? <laughs> yes. Um, you know, when I was 32 years old, I decided I not going out with anybody until I meet with my soulmate. Because I had a <laughs> experience with that I went out with somebody whom, whom I thought very nice, but it ended up, ended up because I couldn't say to their, say yes to their cause or anything like that. So I decided that. And then, um, when I was maybe 35 years, 6 years old, after I came back, I went back from Melbourne to Japan. I started to have an imagination or vision in that. I did it always a white, white small house by the sea on the cliff. And whenever I go there, I, uh, he was there already. And I asked him, when can I see you? And he always said, you know, at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> and then after maybe two years or so, uh, I suddenly I thought, oh, I want to learn um, Japanese archery. And I called the place where I can do it. At the next city, there was a place. So I, I started to practice it. And it was first lesson was on Tuesday, and Tuesday and Thursdays were the practice days. But first week uh, on Thursday, uh, my instructor asked me if I wanted to come to 
Saturday, Saturday's class. It was for kids, but I just started to practice, so I, um, I could come and practice, he offered me. So I went there on Saturday, and then my husband was there. He, was, he is English, but he came to visit his, um, how is it? He, he was on the business trip, and uh, that company was in the city where I went to practice for Japanese archery. So, how about it? <laughs> so, you used your imagination to paint this scene of meeting your beloved, yeah? Not exactly how, how it happens, but no. I imag imagine um, yeah. as if he was there already. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So that's pretty exciting. And, and now you live uh, in England? Yes. And I think you moved house a few months ago, from what I remember? Yes, last month. <laughs> yeah, half a year ago we moved, but yeah, last month we moved again. Okay. Yeah. So, just before we uh, wind this up, Miyuki, just tell me a little bit, bit about the photography you have on your website. Um, the website is called Inspirational Nature Pictures, correct? Yes. And you have some amazing um, uh, kind of categories. Uh, I'll just read a couple of them. Drew, uh, dew drops, which are amazing. I love them. Uh, rainbow cobwebs, which is basically light reflecting and refracting on the cobwebs, yeah? Yes. Uh, light and color and dandelion seeds. So that's just a, a number of categories um, that I've written down that I think are amazing. Thank you. But um, this website is currently not really active. You can see, you can view them. Yep. But I am uh, on the process to create my new website. Okay. So, yes. So, do you know the name of your new website yet? No, but it will be the same. We'll oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so basically, what what we'll do is we'll put your website uh, on iTunes so people can can connect with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And before we wind up, is there anything that you'd like to share, either from today, from all your photography, from connection to being one, anything that you'd like to just leave with the people that would help them feel more connected? Well, I love the quote from Steve Jobs. He said, you can't connect the dots when you are, um, sorry, I don't, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can connect them only looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. Mm. And that is um, my life. I'm, I'm living that. You know, whenever you feel that or you are suffering from something or you have challenging events, that's the sign that you are guided. Mm. And everything happens in our life. That's not um, so-called bad or negative thing. Everything is guiding you towards your life or towards your path in this life. So, and I am just so grateful for where I am now. Even, of course, I can find <laughs> what I don't like, of course, but I cannot see them now mm. because I am focusing on what I love. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great story, Miyuki. Do you want to leave a message in Japanese to your parents, your friends back there in Japanese, and tell them that being empowered is feeling connected to your higher truth? Oh, that's... that's can, you, can you translate that? <laughs> <laughs> it's really difficult. Is it? But 
Yeah. Just, just try. Being, okay. being empowered is feeling connected to your higher truth. Thank you. It was not direct translation. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun try anyhow. <laughs> so thanks everybody for joining the Be Empowered show today. It's been a lot of fun talking with uh, Mayuki. Uh, before we go, I'm going to ask the listeners and the viewers to do a special favour for me and leave a review on iTunes because this will um, increase the ratings of the show and enable this important message to get out to more people. If you'd like to hear more about uh, what my, Miyuki and myself have been talking about today, about feeling connected, um, experiencing freedom, peace of heart, and as pilots, being in the flow. You can always go to Amazon and purchase my book called The Manifesto of Your Inspirational Mind, or you can go to my website, which is www.beempoweredgroup.com, and download a free ebook, which is called Know Your True Value and Worth. Miyuki, it's been a pleasure having you on. Thank you so much for your time. And on behalf of Miyuki and your host, Graham Hopkins, we wish you a wonderful future of freedom, peace, and abundance. Remember, change your energy, change your life. Hey, thanks so much for listening to the Be Empowered podcast. For more on regaining your power by bridging that gap between who you think you are right now and who you really are, go to www.beempoweredgroup.com and enter your name and email address to receive a free ebook and get notified of any upcoming podcasts. Remember, when you know and feel connected to your spiritual mind, you master your world. Changing your energy transforms your life.